Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're continuing to discuss technical analysis strategy applications for algorithmic trading in Python, and the hero of our today's tutorial is Bollinger Bands Indicator, which is quite a famous technical analysis tool that has been around since the 1980s, and it's named after its inventor, famous technical trader and investor John Bollinger. Bollinger Bands, as an indicator, is quite synthetic. It incorporates the logic of moving averages, support and resistance, as well as price trading ranges, and it's mostly focused on share price reversals. That is, it implements the logic of unsustainable upward and downward price movements that are followed or expected to be followed by corrections in opposite direction. Today, we'll learn how to construct the indicator using real-world data, as well as how to simulate a strategy that is informed by trading signals uh, from this indicator. So first of all, for the packages that we'll need today, we'll always, as usual, need NumPy and Pandas to work with arrays and data frames respectively. We'll need the Y-Finance, the Yahoo Finance API package to download real-world financial data. And we'll need Matplotlib PyPlot to visualize our results to build some equity curves and the like. So having imported the packages, we can specify our sample, our data set for today's implementation. So let's choose a stock, we'll specify it using a ticker, and let's select Coca-Cola, quite a stable and well-known US stock. And for our uh, testing period, let's select 10 most recent annual uh, periods. So let's start year-end 2011, so 30th of December 2011, and let's end 1st of January 2022. So 10 full years of data to test our strategy's performance. And then we can specify our uh, data set as a data frame. So we'll initialize an empty data frame. And data price, the series that we'll mainly work with, would be a Yahoo Finance download query based on the ticker, the start and the end dates. And we'll only need the closing prices for our implementation today. And having downloaded that, we can visualize the uh, Coca-Cola price movement to see um, and double check whether we have done everything correctly. And we see how the share price of Coca-Cola have evolved with all the peaks and troughs over the course of 10 years from uh, the start of 2012 until the very end of 2021. Having checked that, we can start calculating our uh, indicator and we'll need three basic parameters two for the indicator itself, and one for the calibration of the trading strategy. The Bollinger Band indicator is defined with its lookback and its width. Lookback is how many trading days back are we uh, calculating the moving average and the uh, standard deviation for the bands for. And the most common lookback advised by John Bollinger himself is 20 trading days. We can vary it in reasonable uh, bands uh, as well, but 20 is the most common by a wide margin. And the width is how many standard deviations of the price uh, defined by the lookback do we use to define the trading range of the price. And uh, most of the time we use width of two standard deviations. Sometimes uh, we can define it uh, a little bit narrower as 1 or 1.5 standard deviations, but again 2 is by a long way the most famous specification used by technical traders. And finally, to uh, calculate the net performance of our simulated strategy, we'll need to specify our trading fee. And let's be a little bit forgiving to our active technical trading here and specify a pretty low fee of one basis point. And having defined this, we can start defining our moving average as well as our standard deviation and the bands. So for the moving average, data MA, we will use the rolling attribute of the pandas package. And the rolling attribute is very handy and useful, not only for technical analysis, but for many other analytical applications that can be applied the following way. 
we apply it to the price series and we'll define our rolling um, function using the lookback, which is an integer we have defined. That's our parameter. How many days back do we look? I'll make sure that your lookback is an integer. And then we need to specify the function that we apply to our rolling period. And here, as it's a moving average, we apply the mean. So that's how we calculate the rolling mean, or in technical analysis terms, the moving average. And for the standard deviation, we can use the same logic, but applying the STD attribute. And we can now define the upper and lower bands, subtracting or adding the width times the standard deviation respectively. So for the upper band, we'll need to add. We'll do data moving average plus width times data standard deviation. And for the lower, we'll do the same, but subtracting. And we can plot the price as well as the moving average and the upper and lower Bollinger Bands. Copying it three additional times and specifying the series that we wish to plot. And we see that for two standard deviations, we can still see the moving average in orange, the upper band in green and the lower band in red. But to make it very contrasting and very visible, if we go for extremely wide bands like five standard deviations, nobody uses that in real world trading. But just for a visualization, we can see how wide the bands become. Or if we reduce the width to one, we can see how much narrower the bands would become. However, let's stick with two for now and proceed to calculating our strategy relevant um, series and variables. First of all, we'll need to do PLT show so that this does not interfere with our further visualizations of strategy performance, for example. Uh, but returning to our um, analytical uh, component of the code, we'll need to figure out the return of the stock so that we can apply our strategy correctly. And the return of the stock can be calculated in a separate series. So let's say data return using the price and the percentage change uh, attribute in the pandas package. And to make our strategy time consistent so that we're not forward looking, we will need to um, use the current price and the current indicator to make a decision and uh, gain a payoff that is dependent on the next day's return. So we'll need to shift our return calculations one back and fill an ace with zeros. And then we'll need to base our uh, decision based on the Bollinger Bands on the so-called impulse. And the impulse for the Bollinger Bands is uh, basically a relative position of the current price with respect to the upper and lower bands. It's calculated as the ratio between the difference of the price and the lower band and the difference between the upper and the lower bands. And we can see that this parameterization quite uh, intuitively defines 1 as the upper band, 0 as the lower band, and 0 0.5 or 50% as the moving average. And this is the key component to inform our trading decisions, to extract signals from this technical indicator. As Bollinger Bands are based on reversals, we would be inclined to long the stock, expecting a positive correction, a bullish correction, if the price goes below or is at the lower band, so if the impulse is zero or lower, and we would expect the negative correction, the bearish correction, if the impulse value is at or above one. If we are at or above the upper band, meaning that our current trading range is unnatural or unsustainable. And we would remain in position until we cross the moving average. And that means that our decision, our signal, is quite a bit harder to implement than in simpler technical trading tools, such as the moving average or the relative strength index. And we need to know what is our position, what is uh, our signal before the current day when we have learned the new value of the indicator. And it means that we'll have to 
apply our strategy simulation using a loop. However, before we move in a loop, let's cleanse our data of uh, NAs so that we can apply the strategy straight away. And to do that, we can use the drop NA attribute for pandas and specify axis equals zero. So we drop NA rows and not NA columns. And having defined that, we'll need to uh, initialize uh, a set of arrays and variables that would be relevant to our strategy implementation. First of all, we'll need to specify that our starting signal, our old signal is zero. We start our simulation in cache and we'll use three arrays to keep track of our strategy performance. So that is signals, an empty NumPy array that will populate as we move in a loop, our gross return and our net return. That we will net off the fees that we have defined here. And then we can move in a loop for t in range from zero to len data as we cleanse the data and dropped NAs that would work. And we'll need to check for four separate cases or realizations. First of all, we'll need to check if we have violated the bands. And because if we have violated the bands, the signal is straightforward. We short the stock if we are above the upper band and we long the stock if we are below the lower band. That is, if we exited the natural sustainable trading range. So if the data impulse at time t is above or equal to one, which means we have exited the range from above, we expect a bearish correction. So our signal is negative one. We're shorting the stock. On the other hand, L, L if data impulse at time t is less than or equal to zero, means they are below the lower band, which means we expect a bullish correction, then we long the stock, signal equals one. And next, if none of them is true, we need to check whether if we were in position, we crossed the relevant moving average. And that can be checked using a quite nice logical product. L if old signal times data impulse at time t minus 0 0.5 is positive. What does it mean? Well, consider if we are in the bullish position, that means we are longing the stock. If we're longing the stock, we would uh, be inclined to sell if the impulse is above the moving average. So if this is positive and this is positive. So if the product is positive, we'll be inclined to sell or to close our long position. If we're in the short position, that means that we are uh, shorting the stock from uh, above and expected to cross the moving average from above, we would expect this to be negative. Whenever this is first negative, we are um, inclined to close our shorting position or buy the stock back. So in both cases, if this product is positive, we would need to close our exposure, whatever it has been. It means that if this is the case, then signal equals zero. We are back in cash. And if this is not fulfilled, then we remain in whatever position we maintained. So signal equals old signal. And having defined our logic of trading, we can calculate our gross and net returns and append our arrays respectively. So the gross return is our signal times data return t. Our net return is our gross return net of fees. So we subtract the fee times the absolute difference between the signal and the old signal. Meaning that if we just close a position, we pay the fees once. If we close a short position, open a long position or vice versa, we'll need to pay twice the amount of fees because we do twice the trading. And finally, we need to uh, append the arrays. So signals equals numpy append signals signal. Gross equals numpy append gross gross return. And net equals numpy append net net return. And then old signal equals signal for the next trading day if we're moving in a loop. 
And having applied this logic of the trading strategy, we can finally visualize our performance using equity curves. So we'll do PLT plot, and then we'll use NumPy append and NumPy comprod to uh, make comparable uh, and smooth curves. So we'll do NumPy append one, as we start with investing $1. We could, for example, here say 100. That means that we start with $100, but it wouldn't affect the shape of our equity curves. And we do NumPy comprod. So first, uh, we need to implement the buy and hold strategy. So here we do NumPy comprod one plus data return. As the return of the buy and hold strategy is just the return of the stock. We close the appropriate parentheses. And then we can copy this twice and input our gross and net returns as well. So here we'd have our gross performance, and here we would have our net performance. And as soon as we press run, we would calculate the performance of our strategies. So here we see the buy and hold performance in blue, the gross performance in orange, and the net performance in green. We see that for the specification of the Bollinger Band using two standard deviations calculated uh, in 20 days look back, we are outperforming the market quite uh, drastically. If we want to test our strategy a little bit more robustly, so for example, increase the fees to 10 basis points, we'll see that in this case, uh, our strategy still outperforms the market, but the uh, outperformance is not as massive. And we can also check whether the specification matters. For example, if we change to look back to 30 days, our strategy is slightly less successful is slightly more in line with the market. If we reduce our look back to 10 days, then let's see what happens with our strategy. Our strategy would perform worse than the market on net and uh, approximately the same as the market in gross. And if we return to a 20 day look back and start changing the width. So if we go for a narrow uh, Bollinger Bands with width of one standard deviation, we'll see that our performance is um, quite a bit worse than in the previous case. And if we go wider, so three standard deviations, we can see that we're trading quite unfrequently as we are staying in cash most of the time and fail to uh, capture the upside potential of a narrower Bollinger Bands with the width of two. So we can see here how um, close to optimal the conventional definition of Bollinger Bands is with two standard deviation width and a 20 day look back. And that's all there is for the implementation of Bollinger Bands as an algorithmic trading strategy in Python. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make this any further suggestions for videos in business, finance or economics you would like me to record. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.